you know, it's been a long, long while I've, I've been here, it seems like it, but I can still remember a great man of God up on, the, up, up on, this, up on this stage, and it was with, some of you remember, we still use it occasionally, the old wooden uh, lectern, and it was his last sermon, and he was hunched over, and he felt he had something to say. And it was Eric Hutchinson. And it was interesting because one of the things, learned it from Tony and learned it from Mike. And most people who work in this church, I learned from a very young age that if all you want is a title, a title is just what you get. And because it's not about the title, to be honest, it's a bit like the, the degree. Degree, it's just a degree, it's a piece of paper. However, it's one of those things where God called me to go to Regents, not for the degree, but for the people. Yeah. And it's one of those things where, in the back, it's fine, but, but it's through the support which you have for other people and that people have for you. However, and there was a however, before I got to that stage, I had a complaint. When I was younger, I had a complaint. As always, a teenager, you always see the holes and you see the bits in things and you think, that's not right. And this is where I'm going to read from Habakkuk. How long, Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen? Or cry out to you, violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. Therefore, the law is paralyzed. And justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is perverted. I'm just going to stop with this one timing. And my complaint was that although we had the different youth leaders come up and they did a fantastic job, all the youth leaders we'd done, they had a fantastic job and they did what they could and they, to that extent. However, I remember sitting in services and People come in, and they'll be at the back, and then they'll wander off. And you'll see it from time and time again, and you think, oh, surely this group here who's getting all the attention, surely they're worth just as much as them they are. So even from a from young, from young age, I was just like, why is this happening? This, this, isn't, this isn't right. And... It was the, the question of which God always throws back at you is like, well, what are you going to do about it? And this is almost in a sense part of um, the call which we have. God says, I've called you to be somewhere or do something, whether in your school, whether in a church, where, Wherever it, may, wherever it may be, whether it's your call to go down to the laundrette and wash your, wash your clothes in the tumble dryer and speak to the old lady there, or the people with the single mums which come in, or whatever, he's called you to be in that place. And the question, the question which I want to throw out is, if God's called every single one of you, are you in that place? Because there's a lot of people in this church, but are you called to this church? If not called to this church, why are you here? In a loving way, if you're not called to this church, I don't want you here. Not because we don't value you, you're great, but if God's called you to be somewhere else, he's called you to be somewhere else for a reason. Because God gives us gifts and abilities, not just for ourselves, but it's to bless other people. And that's what the whole kind of life is for, is that actually when you walk down the street on a Monday morning and you see the person, you see the, the person on the street begging or whatever, which challenges me every single time. 
and you walk past and you think, I haven't got time, I haven't got time. It's actually, where does the Christian life kick in when you hit Monday morning? Brennan Manning, on one of the DC talk tracks, some of you might know, at the start said, the biggest cause of atheism today is Christians who acknowledge Jesus with the lips but deny him as they walk out the door. And that's always hit me very, very hard that actually, although what we do here is, gr- is great, and it's great that we have all these different activities and different things, but how does, this, how does the people and the people around us, how do they live their life on a day-to-day basis? And this is one of the biggest things grow- growing up and working in the churches as part of helping out with the caretaking. You could see Sometimes the, you saw both the joy in the office when, the, when all the pastors were rejoicing and it was a good reason to celebrate and you, I saw them when they were all sitting there going, what on earth do we do now? And total despair. And, but it's a team. And which comes to the other point is which actually, if God's called you to be here, God's called other people to be here. So watch where you put your knife. Because we can take it from, Pat mentioned it in Bible Calf very, yeah, a, couple, a few weeks ago. It's like when David and Saul, you can get that close to someone else who's been called that you can cut off a bit of their garment. That if you go too far, if you're not, if you're not acting right, actually, you can kill someone off who's actually they're supposed to be there. And it's the same, same with church life. We're part of a team. We're part of growing people. Yeah. And that the sword which we, we, get, we get given, so to speak, in uh, Ephesians can quickly turn to a sword of bitterness, yeah. unforgiveness, jealousy. And as much as I know and, my, and the people and the, the team, Gavna, we, we know we're not perfect. We know we don't perhaps cater for everyone. Not everyone perhaps understands every, every Sunday. But we do our best. And sometimes you'll, you'll have, I mean, looking up on the balcony, there's not a single person up there which has not got any gifts. They're all full of gifts. There's so much potential up there. Yeah. It's amazing. And even the people not here. There's a person to watch out for, and that's Ben Wood. And when he gets hold of it, this church will be blown away. And even people, even people can't lawn a tween and things like that. He sits there and goes, I haven't got anything, I haven't got anything, don't look at me. When you see what the gifts which she's got, you'll be blown away. And the same, and same with everyone else. Yeah. She's going, no, no, no. <laughs> it's true. And every single one of them will have their own thing. And you'll stand there, and each of them will be different, and each of them will be unique. But you'll stand there, and you'll just be amazed. Yeah. 